All right, everyone. So the last thing that I did was I shared a photo, and uh, we have there's many nuances to that. Uh, simply here, what I did was I I shared a photo, but the nuances are that you can add filters and hashtags and share it directly and such. I'm going to do one more thing about sharing, and then we'll look at other aspects of Instagram, because again. Uh, you want followers on Instagram, you want followers on Twitter, you want followers, followers on all of these because these, these could be potentially be customers. One of our clients is a jewelry designer and so she uses Instagram really effectively. She's got hundreds of followers. She posts great photos of her jewelry and then guess what? A link to go buy the jewelry. You can add a link to the description, share a great photo, put the link to your, to your product there, and then people can click to see that. People can go click on the link to go actually buy it. Now, photos are one of the things that I can share. I'm going to click that, uh, that central sharing button again. I'm going to click the share button right there in the middle one more time. And again, we've got gallery, so we can load a photo or a video out of the gallery. Um, something that exists or we can look at another fun aspect of things video if you click that video tab now I've got a uh, big red button and what that will be is that'll be video so I'm gonna tap and hold it so as I tap and hold what's going to happen is that little bar is increasing do you see that this bar Short mine in a moment, but this bar is increasing. I recorded a. It, it, I wish it would tell you the, the actual amount of seconds, um, but in my case, anyway, it uh, recorded a little bit. And what you could do is you can tap it and oops, lost my connection. Uh, what you can do is you can you can tap it and hold it and just keep recording nonstop. Or what you can do is get creative and record a little bit, let go of the the button, and then reposition yourself. Now I'm going to tap and hold at this point, and now my shot is going to be different. So I'm going to let it go there. I record a little bit more. Then I'm going to go over here and maybe get some other kind of shot and record over here. So here's a shot of looking outside. And so what I can do is stop it and start it, and it's going to record in different amounts of time. I don't have to fill up the whole, uh, the whole bar down there. Let's, let's say this is all that I want for the moment. Again, I can't tell exactly how many real seconds I recorded. I recorded some amount of time. I'm going to click the next button, top right, processing. And I can even add filters to this, but before that, I'm going to press play. Tap and hold the red button. So look at that. I'm getting different shots here. I got a little recorded there, and then I changed it over there. And then I change it another. Also, my voice. I'm hearing my voice here. So if I tap to play my current result, tap to pause. I recorded something for a few seconds, different angles. So again, I could easily just turn it on and record something. And that's fine. I could maybe get more creative and record something straight on for a moment, and then add a side for a little bit, and another side, and then I get something more visually interesting. That's what this whole network is about, sharing visually interesting things, either photos or video. To make it more interesting, I can also add filters to the video, not just to photos, but I can add, let's say, X-Pro. So look at that. Now it's got that sort of effect, the X-Pro effect onto my video. And again, this is optional. The filters are optional. And I know some people hate them and some people love them. Like, why does my photo look so weird? Well, you chose a filter. That's the point of it. If you don't want it to look weird, don't put a filter. Uh, but this is a style. Let's see, look at that. See how those change in, in style. Maybe I like that. Maybe I like that weird blue color shift. Again, it's about sharing something interesting. You have to be careful, of course, because if you have Food, some of these filters don't look very good on food. I don't want blue food. <laughs> and you can add a filter quickly. You can mute the volume. Let's see, what does that one in the middle do here? Choose a cover frame. Okay, the cover frame is 
before someone watches your video, there will be like a preview thumbnail, the cover image. That's what that central icon is. Choose some picture as a preview, like a thumbnail preview. Because if I didn't, that might be my preview when people are scrolling through Instagram and they see that. Boring. But if I go in and choose a cool, you know, picture to actually entice people to watch it, the video, I can go in and select the cover image. Cover frame. I can turn the video off. I mean, I can turn the audio off. And so, again, very, very similar to sharing a photo. I, I take it, maybe filter it. Then I go next, and then the same as before. Do I share it to all my followers? Do I share it directly to certain customers? Because think about doing it like this. You've got followers, you've got customers on your Instagram, and someone is having trouble. I can't figure out how to assemble your baby carriage. I can take some quick photos or video of me assembling that carriage, and with Instagram video, remember, I can record a little bit from this angle, and then a little bit from that angle, and then I can share this video directly with the customer once I've got connections. In my case, I'm <coughs> going to write a caption. So I'm going to write uh, social. I'm going to do like this. I'm going to write hashtag social media. Two million posts. Social media <coughs> hashtag students. So here I'm hitting people that are searching social media and um, students. Two million students, posts, 99,000 student lives, students life, students day, student section. So you want to use, whoops, you want to use um, You want to use sorry about that, it crashed, but let me load it up again. You want to use hashtags, and you want to use them that have some good amount of users, meaning I don't want to use a hashtag that's at 1,000 posts. Not a lot of people are looking at those hashtags, so they're not going to look at mine. On the opposite side, perhaps don't use hashtags with a lot of people, because then yours might get lost. So what's too little, what's too much? I can't exactly tell you, but let's say just for some numbers 1000 is a little small for the minimum and when you get into the millions uh, you know two millions not so bad five million not so bad some of them have a hundred million when you get to that level people are posting and posting and posting so much on your content I bet if I go back to look at cool kids again I'm gonna have to scroll and scroll and scroll to find my photo again it already got drowned out from the other hundreds of millions of people so it's up to you to experiment. What's a minimum amount of hashtag users and what's a maximum? You know, 1,000 to 1 million, let's say. Really huge range, of course. But here, then, I've got a couple of hashtags. I'm doing social media students. And so that's my description. I can add a location if I want. I can also share it to other networks. Notice it removed one of them. I can't share it to Flickr. This video, it's a video, so it won't share. Videos won't share exactly to all the networks. Notice Swarm is turned off and such. But uh, I will click Share button at the top right. Don't forget that 
top right share button or accept button. It'll process it, it'll upload it. All my zero followers would see it. They would see it, but then they wouldn't hear sound until they pressed play. That's good at least, or else everyone's going to have their the music suddenly playing. Tap it to to hear the sound, tap it to pause. So I shared a video. Any questions on that so far? If you just write on social media and don't do anything else. That'll be just fine. You can write whatever you want on that description. I would use it to write know two or three hashtags just to helpfully re hopefully reach more people if I go look at my home screen this is the screen where I will then see how many posts I've made I've got two posts so far I can view them as thumbnails I can view them as a list I can view all the photos that I've added to a map So you can check that out. You can go back to your home, the little person icon, and then you can go to the, that's supposed to be the map pin. You can click there and it'll show you everywhere where you've posted your, uh, everywhere where you've shared a photo and it's attached to the map. You can go to, you can go to the fourth icon, which is tags. If other people have shared something, and they've tagged you into it, it's, you know, it's a photo of you or your product, and you'll see those there. That's back to edit my profile, how many posts, how many followers, how many I'm following. Sometimes you see that people share photos that are sort of like divided into quadrants, like a collage. There's one square photo, but it's divided. In the corner, it's got this photo, and in the left corner, it's got that one. You know, a collage. For, uh, Instagram does not have built in the way to do that. People do that with extra apps. You know, there's extra apps for you to, tr to create photos in different ways. Let's say I find some sort of collage app. So in that app, I create a four-quadrant collage. Then to share it on Instagram, I would need to go to share. Then I would need to go to my gallery. That photo was most likely shared to the, I mean, saved to the gallery. So I need to load it from the gallery of my device. There's a bunch of photo apps out there that let you do interesting and weird things, so you need to do it on that app first and save it. And then you go into Instagram and you, and you, uh, you load it up. So again, in, in this class, in this two-month sequence that I teach, I can always show you how to set it up, what the tools are, and so forth. What to share is always the hard thing to, to teach because everyone is a little different. Now you've got to think about how can I show off my product or my business, my company, my brand, my nonprofit, whatever. How can I show it off in a visual format, in a square, in a square photo or a square video, 60 seconds at a time? You could use Instagram as like a mini YouTube. You know, YouTube is where people upload videos, you know, 10 minutes long, 5 minutes long, whatever. And here we have 60 seconds at most, or 15 seconds, whatever your version has, to share a video. Maybe I'm, every day I'm going to do the Instagram tip. Maybe I'm a web designer and every day I want to say something about some sort of web design tip. So I'll record myself simply like this. Hey everyone, welcome to the show and today don't forget to update your plugins. That's it. Put an interesting filter, put some hashtags, and every day or every week I'm going to try something like that. Again, what you share is up to you. Let's say I've got this, this bakery. 
we're baking something every day, I can record, just point my phone at my cupcake and record 10 seconds of it. Fine. Put a nice filter on it, put some hashtags, share it. Do that every day, or once a week, twice a week, whatever. In my class at Southwestern College, because I teach a social media class there, what I have students do, like when, they, when we get to the Twitter assignment, because there's assignments and grades down there, I have everyone tweet every single day something new and different for one week straight. Obviously, to get an A, you better do that. <laughs> to get a B, you miss a day or two. To get a C, you, f you forgot and you did it all in one day. That was not the point. <laughs> so, the force that forces you to create seven things, seven photos nonstop, one whole week. And the big companies do that. For us as a beginner, let's, I don't have time for that. I don't have ideas for that. But the big companies do that something new every day, two or three things new every day, because they've got a whole stable of social media professionals in their employ that one is every day going to be recording this or taking that photo and someone else is going to be doing something else and they've all got access to the account and everyone's sharing and putting out content. The more content, the more your stuff is found. The more your stuff is found, the more possibility you get followers. The more followers you have, the more possibility you make sales or get donations or whatever you're trying to do. Victor, on mine, I don't know if it's because uh, my account is new, but it does have a uh, layout for Instagram where it has collages. Oh, does it? Yeah. Is that an iPhone or an Android? Android. Maybe I need to update mine. So if you guys do see collage, okay, cool. You, you just have something that mine does it. I can find the gallery. Mm -hmm. Yours is called library. Okay, so then in the gallery, that's when you. Okay. Okay, good. You click to share a photo and then you select library. So it looks like you can make a collage, but you have to make it out of existing photos. I was assuming that I could make it out of shooting photos right now. So it looks like you can go back to it by clicking the if you click on the you click on the share button again right there in the center and then you'll get your gallery or library. So I'm going to try that actually. Uh, I'm going to click the share button. I'm going to go to my gallery. And in my case, yeah, I guess mine has it also. Uh, there's this icon here. That's the collage. That's good. You used to have to go off and get another app. So let's say I've already got a photo that I've created. So I can select an existing photo and use that. <clears throat> so I can choose an existing photo. I can also do the collage, I guess. Get a layout. Okay, looks like it's an extra app, not built in layout from Instagram, collage. Okay, so it's an extra app. I'm not going to bother downloading it, but it looks like they have that ability. And there's also animated GIFs, that little infinity symbol. It's called Boomerang. So they don't have it, they don't have some of these features built in. These are ancillary apps. Like right here, I'd like to do an animation. These are very popular nowadays. Not really a video, because it won't have sound. It's going to be like, you know, five or six frames that you put together to do an animation that loops back and forth. It's very popular with some demographics. But I would need to go off and get the other app and it looks like it'll prompt me to do so by clicking here either to animate or to make the collage. So what you're going to share, you, you're going to figure that out. And 
the way possibly to figure that out is if you go back to the Explore tab, which is the magnifying glass, look at what everyone else is sharing. You know, some of these things like that. From a distance, that looks like a terrible photo. But I'm sure it's got a lot of likes and such because it's from a famous person. But some of these other ones, you know, to get inspiration, I can do that. It's just a regular old selfie there, a little off-center. You know, not perfectly centered on screen, it's a little off-center. And black and white, I can do that. You know, some photos at the gym, photos of food. You're going to see what people are posting. Obviously, some of these are harder to take. One big secret about Instagram is you can take the photo at that moment and use it or take the photo elsewhere and then use it. And what I mean by that is, if you really want to cheat on Instagram, take out your good camera, you know, your $500 camera, and take a great photo with that, and then load it into your phone. How to do that? You have to figure it out. <laughs> but you can take a photo, you know, with a real camera like that. That was obviously taken with a real $2,000 camera at the game, and then they processed it in Photoshop and then got it into their phone somehow and then shared it on Instagram. That's how people can also create really Instagram, really interesting Instagram video. I'm gonna go take a photo, I'm gonna take a video with my real video camera. I'm gonna process it in iMovie and then I'm gonna get it into my phone somehow. And then I'm gonna share it on Instagram. Not really. The only thing you can do is add a couple filters and such, but you can't, you know, fix wrinkles really. You can't cut out someone and move them elsewhere. You can't do any of that advanced photo editing. It's just filtering and a little bit of maybe you can rotate it a little. You can uh, make the colors stronger and such, but like real difficult photo editing, you need another software. So this uh, explore window again, it's for inspiration. And then also you've got the search at the top. If you tap search up there, you can search your recent searches, which will stay saved there. You can search for people, tags, places. Let's see what happens if I, if I go to search and I have places, nearby places. This is useful for you as a business. If you've got a business at a location, people always want to know, how do I find local people? Depending on the network, you'll be able to or not. On Instagram, try it here. Click on the, on the search icon, and then at the very top, click, the, click search. You see at the very top, you'll see search. Click search, and then you'll have the ability to search. Let me see this, hopefully. If it doesn't have places, you might have to turn it on in your settings. But if I click places, it'll. I can put a keyword to search, or better yet, I can click nearby places. So Instagram will see places on the map nearby and show me who is sharing there. So the four points right across the street over there, they've got it here. Four points by Sheraton. If I tap on that, these are the photos that people took of that location across the street. The point of this is to see these are real people sharing nearby, because what if my business is right over here? And I'm seeing people are sharing right over there. There's real people out there that I could get as followers. Talk about getting followers in a moment, of course. But everything we've talked about on the previous classes still applies here. Do search, follow accounts, you'll get some followbacks, comment, and so forth. We'll go into detail, but it's already what we've talked about previously. So search is very valuable. Let's see all the photos of San Diego Zoo. That's everyone right there. A photo of that. That's a video of a very vicious turtle. And some meerkats. So Stacy Kareev shared this photo of these meerkats
seems to be visiting from Russia. And so um, let's, uh, let's shift gears a little bit. We've been sharing. And next we'll talk about um, next we'll talk about uh, trying to get followers. But any questions so far? Okay, so let's say then um, we have some concepts about sharing content. Let's talk a little bit about getting followers. This will be reminiscent of things we've already talked about because it applies to all the networks. But I will start off by first going back to that share, uh, I mean, go back to that um, uh, explore window, the search window. Here's what people are, are posting. And then at the very top, we will have search. So I'm going to click at the top, search. And now, based on your business, your company, whatever your online presence is, I want to search keywords. I want to search hashtags about the topic of your business. I'm going to go to tags. And I'm going to type hashtag something. I'm going to search for some keyword about your business. I'm Victor's Bakery, so I could have a variety of things to search for, such as cookie. It's going to suggest cookie, cookies, cookie dough, cookie monster, cookie art, etc. Cookies and cream. There are 3.7 million results for cookie and 9 million results for cookies. The point of that is people are sharing cookies. I sell cookies. It might be valuable for me to get followers that like cookies because I sell cookies. So I'm gonna try the first one here. 3 million, 3.7 million results of cookie. Now again I have to say this is a global network and there is an internal um, there are standards, community standards and such. Sometimes things slip through the cracks, and so whenever you're in a public environment and I'm teaching this stuff, there is the possibility that sometimes offensive things might appear, and I'll try to change the screen as soon as possible, but uh, just be aware of that, that sometimes that stuff happens. So, I go to Cookie, and I get these top posts. Some of these seem to be videos. I get related at the top. Sweets, Oreo, Nutella, candy, chocolate. Okay, that's useful because that helps me find more people. Top posts have a value, which I'll talk about later. But then I'm going to see most recent. Something very recently was posted about cookie. Now, from a distance, that doesn't look like a cookie to me. But it looks tasty. These are cookies. That doesn't look like a cookie either. But people can use any hashtag for for their stuff. But let's say I'm going to choose a random picture here. So this one from Yeto Be Found posted <coughs> this picture of a cookie, and I'm seeing Yeto Be Found gave the description. So cute, Riley, baby, cookie, first cookie, love him. So a bunch of hashtags. You put these different hashtags, I found his photo, he or she. 
and I, and eight minutes ago it was posted. The point of this is, like all the other networks, I have the I have the four basic interactions. I have the like, which is hearts right here. So if I tap on that heart, yet be found, got a notification that said Victor's Bakery liked your photo. Just like Twitter, Pinterest, Google Plus, blah 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 blah. All the networks have some way to like. They might call it different things. Yes. Uh, what's that? It's a person. It's a person on Instagram. So what happens tomorrow when she uh, goes and looks at it and finds that Victor's Bakery has been deleted? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> this is for edu this is for educational purposes. <laughs> if it was a real account, then they would go and see the account that I followed them, and then they'd feel good. Even in this case here. They say, oh great, someone followed me. I mean, someone liked my photo. So this person here then gets a notification, Victor's Bakery liked my photo. The point of that, just like every other network, is they get the notification, they are aware that I exist. Right now there's 400 million users. At least one user now knows I exist. And that one user may then say, who's this Victor's Bakery? And they will click on my name and see my account here with no photo, no biography, and two weird pictures. So they may or may not follow me. There's going to be a button that they will see that says follow. So the point is, that's why it's valuable, like every other network, put in your company picture, put in a biography, fill it in, add some pictures, three to five pictures, to show something for it, because if I'm Victor's Bakery, I should be sharing baked good photos and video. And so when Yeto comes to go check out my photo, oh, I see, yet to be found. I got it now, yet to be found. <laughs> Yeto, yet to be found. When yet to be found finds me and looks at my stuff, he or she may like my stuff, or better, follow me. You've got these other things I, that you can do. I'm going to scroll down because other results will appear here. So then, let's see this one. Um, Anais de Coster. Anais de, Cost de Coster. 10. Shared this. <laughs> I put the apostrophe. Uh, so she shared something. I see it. Again, I have the options like, or I've got these other two types of interactions. I've got the share. I would say the order of importance is uh, the like, the share, or the comments, even though they're in different order there. They're all valuable, but the least valuable is the like. Not that it's bad. The bad one is nothing. Someone does nothing. They see your photo, they move on. That's the bad one. I want likes, but they are so transitory, they're so throwaway. I give a like, I move on, what's next? Like, what's next? Very short attention span. The next level up is that someone took a moment to do that share. If I tap that, it'll say, okay, share this. Who do you want to send this to? I don't have any followers at the moment, any connection, so I can't really send it to anyone. But let's say I have three followers and one of them has 300 followers. That person might have liked my photo so much they sent it to more people. They can tap that and if I had to show you here I would select other people and they would send my photo to other people. That's great because then my content reaches more people. That's better than a like. They're becoming cheerleaders for me for, for free. Another level up would be the the comments, that little speech bubble right there. Because that one takes the effort for someone to click and write something hopefully meaningful. So if I tap there and it says add a comment and I'm gonna say looks so tasty. Yes, I'm going to randomly send 
a comment to someone that I don't know who they are on Instagram, yes, you do need to do that. You do need to talk to strangers. It's safe. Uh, <laughs> on Instagram, if you're over 13 years old. And so the point of this is to hopefully find a new customer. What if I am able to sell these cupcakes and ship them out worldwide? It looks like this person is in France, perhaps. I'm seeing uh, some French there, I think. So what if I can, say, send my uh, baked goods throughout the world? Okay, this could be a potential customer. Best case scenario, I write something here, they follow me, they buy a product. That's the best case scenario. Worst case scenario, they ignore me. Actually, worst case scenario is they say, who are you? Leave me alone. But I don't see that too often. If you are positive, you'll get positivity back. If you're negative, you'll get negativity back. So if you run your social media in a very positive way, giving compliments and being positive and such, you'll get that back too. Maybe Anais will, Anais will reply back to me, follow me back, like my stuff back, comment back. Maybe. The more I do it, the more possibility that I get a good result and this holds true on Twitter and on Google Plus and all the networks, so this is redundant. We did mention this stuff. It's just a different app, a different window, a different icon, but it's all the same concept. I want to always think about commenting on people's stuff to keep the conversation going. That's a little bit of a dead end right there. I gave a compliment. It looks so tasty. That's nice. Everyone, please remember to mute your devices if you haven't done so yet, please. Just one moment. Here I've given a, um, a positive comment, but it's a bit of a dead end. I can easily keep the ball rolling by adding a question. Uh, and what's your question? Is there a maximum a maximum of text here? What's that word? A maximum of what? Hashtag. Oh, hashtag. Um, yes, I said earlier uh, that they have a maximum of 30. But do you think this way to put a lot of keywords? Or? No, like I also said earlier, I would recommend between 5 and 10 hashtags, because when you're getting to 30, you're starting to look a little spammy. And I know that this person really isn't trying to be a spammer, but here this is like way too many of them. Kiss, kiss, after, and, by, you know, that's getting kind of spammy. You don't quite want that. You want the three, five, or ten really good hashtags that really show off what your product or photo is. <clears throat> so I'm going to say, look so tasty. Um, I'm going to say, do you have one every day. So just some kind of question to get the ball rolling. Some people will ignore it. Uh, some people will answer. Some people will say, leave me alone, who are you? <laughs> but the negativity, you won't see the negativity if you're positive. So yes, I will click to send that. I click that share comment, but now Anais saw this. They got the notification. Victor's Bakery commented on your photo. Now another person on Instagram knows I exist, which could result in a like, a comment, a share, or a follow. That's the fourth interaction, because I'm going to see on everyone's items here, I'm going to see follow. That's the fourth interaction. And the more followers I get, the more potential customers I have. Yes? Um, so the send to button, um, it's only allowing you to, to share with one other person, or is there like a kind of like a retweet where you can just post it to everybody? I have to double check on that, and I don't have any followers to confirm it, but I, I think from here you, you might be able to tap more than one. Um, I don't have any to, pr to confirm it, but there isn't the exact sort of retweet because the thing about retweets on Twitter and such is that uh, they've set up the system for you to be able to share your content to, 
to get your content reshared easily. But on Instagram, it's a little bit more about look what I created, uh, and I want to share it that way rather than look what someone else did to borrow it. This is more to send to individuals rather than to all of my accounts. That's just the way they set up their their system. From a marketing standpoint, there actually isn't that much of a use for it. If I'm a business and I'm trying to get followers to buy my cookies, there's not much of a point, actually. Uh, I could get the same sort of result from doing the comment, the comment or the like. This is more from the other side. I want my stuff to get shared. So I want to put stuff out there, and I want people to like it so much that they want to share it. From the marketing standpoint, for us as a business, not too much. The point is, I'm going to get people to notice me, and I can do that with a like or a comment. And that is like, yeah, I saw someone's picture, but why would I send it to my customers? It's not my product. So I can always, let's say I see this one from Iris Bakery. I can, you, before a follow, you can tap the icon of the account to go show you the whole account. So every time, be careful about that following on any network. Just to follow an account to get a follow back might not be the best idea until you check their account. Because they might have posted one great baking photo and you clicked follow, but actually most of the time they're posting, you know, uh, hardcore political rants that you don't want to you don't want to see. So uh, I wouldn't give those follows away as fast as a as a like or a comment. I would save the follows to real accounts that you do want to see their stuff, because every time you do a follow, you will see their photos every time they post something new on the home screen. So before giving that follow, I would click the icon of the account, right, you'll see their icon, click that, tap their icon, and then you'll see all about it. Irina Bogdanovich, food blogger, photo amateur, my blog, irusia.livejournal.com, from Minsk, Belarus, a phone number there, look at how they're doing it. That's a, that's a pretty good way, a pretty good bio right there. Food blogger, <coughs> photographer. Here's a couple of links, one to the, one to the blog, uh, an email, uh, yeah, an email right there, Viber account, WhatsApp account. So lots of ways to get in contact with them. 10,000 followers. 1,200 posts. So maybe I, I will click follow. That'll give me inspiration about what is Iris Iris doing. And, uh, you know, some of these look really professional. Some of them look amateur, but I can do some of these things. I can take a photo of my product in a box like that. <coughs> yeah, I just got a real life right now. I got some sort of interaction. I did not plan that. Someone on Instagram, <laughs> someone on Instagram did something. They did something. I got a notification there. That's the point. I'm active on Instagram. I could get results. Let's see what result I got here. Again, I didn't plan this. I tap on the heart. Skittles liked your photo 24 seconds ago. So, okay, great. I got, a, I got some results. <laughs> <laughs> the point of that is, and again, I don't know who this is. Maybe it's someone in the room. Great. If not, <laughs> if not, it might be someone out there in the in the rest of the world. I I'm gonna click their account. Mabel O'Reilly tattoo, cartoons and cereal, fixed gear and black books from Portland, Maine, in San Diego, California. Snapchat Skittles. Okay, so an, a tattoo artist seems to have liked my photo for some reason. So. Where do you see the location? It depends on the person. The location on this one says they've got a, a location right there, San Diego. So the point of this is they seem to be doing what I'm teaching. They are searching for things. 
they are searching for things. Mm -hmm. They are giving likes. I've, it's like I said previously, it's like fishing. You're going to put out that bait, you're going to get some fish. Part of the bait is to do a like, a comment, a share, a follow. That's the bait. Because the ultimate thing to catch that fish is I want to follow back. So I got a like. And again, I have all of the options. I have all of these possibilities that I could do. I could just do nothing. I could move on. Great, moving on with my day. I could give a follow. That's the highest level. And I don't really want to see this stuff, maybe. So maybe I don't want to follow. But what I could do is I look at these items. I look at these photos. I tap one. And then I could do the like, the comment, the share. I'll give him a like. So now Skittles got a, a notification. Victor's Bakery liked your, your photo. I'll go up one more level. I'll also add a comment. I'll say looking good. <laughs> and then I'll add an emoji because it's the new language of the of the web. Looking good. So now Skittles got the no another further notification that says looking good. And that might result on their end from nothing more or another like or another comment or better yet a follow. How do we get the emojis when you type It depends on your phone. Uh, I'll have to show you during the, the break. But depending on your phone, you might have if you press and hold the space bar, it might give you emoji option. If it doesn't, you'll need to set it up. So we'll talk about that later. So let's see what else. I'm gonna... the, um, the number of likes that you do for other people show up on your profile? Uh, no, let me confirm that. I'm going to go to someone else's account, the vintage Jaren. I want to go to some random account and I'm gonna see does it can I see their likes I don't believe you can see their likes I believe those are private but let me confirm because I can see their photos their locations their tags I don't think I'm seeing their likes No, so it looks like likes are private. I'll have to confirm, but I haven't seen it on this account. So That's likes good, are private. Because then it doesn't look like I'm being over generous yeah. just liking everybody. Exactly. Because it shows up. On Twitter, it does show up, it so does that's a show good point. Up, exactly. Yeah. So I'm very stingy with my likes. <laughs> <laughs> so it is below the photo 154 likes. Well, that's the number of likes on that photo. I'm trying to look to see if this account, Antonio, I'm trying to see all of the likes that Antonio has given. And I don't think I see that. But yes, you will see the number of likes on a photo below it. So that's one place. You know, if someone's browsing around and they see your name, they're over and over on people's accounts. But at a certain point, these all just become a number. I think under 13 likes, all the names are visible. But then after that, it becomes a number. All right, so this is uh, this is the tactic, and like every other network, you need to do a little searching, keywords, find some content, like some content, reply to some of it, follow some of them, and you'll get some of those back. It does take that time and effort. Uh, you can set yourself a goal, you know, once a week for one hour. I'm going to use Instagram nonstop. Whatever happens in that one hour, that's my goal. Or half an hour, or 10 minutes, it doesn't matter. Your goal could be once a week for 10 minutes, use Instagram nonstop. I don't mean post and post and post photos nonstop. I mean go do that search, like stuff, reply to stuff for 10 minutes. Maybe once a day, spend 10 minutes uh, to see how you like it or not. And that's the same thing with all the networks. Decide that once a week, I'm going to log into Twitter and use it nonstop for 15 minutes and see what happens. Maybe I'll just search. Maybe I won't do much, but I'll learn something. 
Maybe I'll reply to people and, I get, and I'll get some follows in that 10 minutes. Maybe I'll post something and it took me 10 minutes to figure out a great photo and a filter and such and I'm done. Great. Use these networks for some amount of time on a regular basis. And like I said, down at Southwestern College in that class, you have to use, you know, uh, I, I, for, the, for the Instagram assignment, you had to share something new nonstop every day to get used to this, to think of something new. Obviously, you were not going to get an A if you shared the same thing seven days in a row with a different filter. That's a good C plus right there, effort. But um, there's no there's no assignments and such for this class. It's up to you to get something out of it, and I'm recommending and guiding you to do these things. You know, give yourself that goal once a week. Use use Word uh, use Instagram nonstop for half an hour. See what happens. I'm going to take one more break and we'll look at other aspects of Instagram, but uh, any questions so far? All right, it's 11.30. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 11.40 and then we'll go on.